Assalamu alaikum students. So this is a continuation of my respiratory lectures. Uh, my intention is to cover up those lectures which were left uh, in the middle uh, when COVID struck us in March. We were having uh, nice regular live classes uh, in our college, uh, but then this calamity hit us and we had to stop. So the latter half of uh, respiration had to be uh, converted into an online presentation. And at that time, uh, I covered the lectures, as you know, uh, by sharing PowerPoint presentations and other supporting material. Uh, but now that I have some time, uh, I'm recording these lectures for those particular videos uh, for which you have neither attended lectures or heard me talk about them. Uh, so I'm now uh, for important topics only. Before this, I have, uh, as you may have seen, uh, talked about uh, regulation of respiration, uh, the nervous control, uh, the chemical control. So this now is, uh, we are going towards the end of uh, guiding physiology and covering uh, the various important topics. And our topic is uh, the, the main differences between hypoxemia uh, and hypoxia and uh, its clinical importance uh, to how do you diagnose it what are, what are the various uh, parameters that are different between them uh, and 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 their treatment so uh, first we'll differentiate between hypoxemia and hypoxia then we'll talk about the very important point which usually comes in your uh, mcqs and seqs the causes of each each of them and then we'll be different types of hypoxia. Uh, and uh, a part of this, a very important part, is the role of oxygen uh, that it plays in treating hypoxia and which type of hypoxias have uh, limited uh, oxygen uh, role and which of the hypoxia has no role for oxygen. I'll be sniffing on the way because I have a slight flu. Okay. So before we go into uh, the thick of things, uh, if you remember, I did talk about the AA gradient uh, in while we we're discussing the second chapter of Guyton, right at the end of it, we were uh, rounding up uh, V over Q ratios, the abnormalities, the effect of V over Q changes in blood gases. Uh, there, you, uh, I, I discussed. Uh, an AA gradient concept. Uh, I think this is a key point here and the way I present the, the this topic uh, later on is basically based on the AA gradient. So let's quickly revise that. Capital A as you know in respiratory physiology is related to alve alveolar stuff. Uh, the small a is related to uh, artery, uh, uh, arterial blood, so circulation. So AA gradient basically is the difference of uh, uh, gases between the alveoli and the blood basically that's the concept so this is the relationship between the aa gradient it's a it's a relationship between uh, uh, oxygen in the alveoli alveolar oxygen and oxygen in the blood uh, that has visited the lung very importantly so deoxygenated blood came to the uh, lung for getting oxygenated and then it left so if we were to take a sample of that arterial blood which has left the lungs uh, and, and, and we take a sample of the alveolar air, uh, would it be the same? Uh, would there be a difference? Uh, are there certain conditions in which this difference is exaggerated, is increased? And what is, that, what is the importance for that? We'll, we'll talk about that. So here, oops, here you see that even normal people have a slight AA gradient, which is normal. It's, it's, uh, it's no big deal. It is there for physiological reasons, not pathological reasons. Why is that? Uh, if you remember, and I hope you do, I uh, spoke extensively about um, the PO2 of blood, which has freshly been oxygenated at near the alveoli. And then when it leaves and it enters the heart and when it leaves the heart, the aorta, 
the PO2 drops, if you remember. So the PO2 of freshly oxygenated blood is 104 millimeter mercury, while the systemic blood PO2 is not 104 mmHg, it is around 95 mmHg. So there's a difference of about 9 to 10 millimeter of uh, mercury uh, decrease in oxygen tension in blood. Why is that? And we talked about it. So very quickly, the difference, this difference, which is by the way, physiological, normal, it happens, it, 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 uh, it's there in all of us, is because of a small amount of deoxygenated blood dumping into the left atria. Where did, where does that blood come from? From the, from the uh, vasculature of the lung tissue itself. Okay. And uh, you know, there are two, uh, two different uh, types of uh, uh, circulations going on in the lung. One is uh, uh, pulmonary circulation and one is, one is uh, bronchial circulation. So one is supposed to make this whole oxygenation of blood for, for our use possible, while the other is for the lung tissue itself. So obviously that blood, when it has oxygenated the lung tissue and it goes back, it's deoxygenated and it's, uh, uh, it gets dumped along with its pulmonary uh, blood cousin into the left atrium. Although uh, technically it shouldn't, it should enter the right heart. But since everything from all exits, all exit roads from lungs, uh, uh, as far as uh, vasculature is concerned, go to the left atrium, this blood also goes to the atrium. It is deoxidated blood, as I just mentioned, so that it decreases the purity of the PO2 of freshly oxygenated blood. So that's one source of corruption in the PO2, the drop in PO2. The other is the heart, uh, uh, the heart uh, tissue, uh, uh, blood coming from the heart tissue itself. So heart is famous for pumping blood, but of course it's a tissue itself. It needs nourishment. So the, the blood that is coming back after supplying oxygen and carrying its carbon dioxide, it also needs to go somewhere. Well, guess what? It gets dumped on the left side as well, dropping the PO2 of that freshly oxygenated blood from 104. And both of these dilutions uh, give you a, a value of around uh, 95 mmHg. Uh, we call it physiological shunting, if you remember. So there is a, there is a small gap between P capital AO2, alveolar uh, oxygen tension, and arterial blood oxygen tension due to uh, what I've just described. However, uh, it is exaggerated in uh, ventilation perfusion abnormalities. Now, if you remember, we talked about V over Q at length, really, together with lung zones, how lung zones create V over Q uh, differences in the lung, and how these differences in the lung uh, then affect the blood gases. So if you remember, and I cannot go into detail of that, that is really uh, not, uh, the details of that is not relevant here. Uh, you should, if you have a problem uh, recording all of that stuff, you should revise it uh, from your lectures, uh, notes, etc. But I'll just give you the bottom line. Uh, the apical, the upper portion of the lung, the blood that is coming from there, they, the apical portion of the lungs are high VQ ratio, uh, ratio areas, high VQ areas. So there's more ventilation as compared to blood flow, okay? While the lower lung zones are low VQ ratio areas, low VQ areas, all right? This happens normally in lung as well. It's only the extreme of the high VQ that becomes dead space and very extreme of low VQ that becomes shunt. But normally, you have this variation within a certain framework, no abnormalities. So even normally, you have different uh, blood tensions in the various uh, blood flows from the various lung zones of the lung. 
So blood returning from the higher areas of the lung uh, would have more oxygen tension because it's coming from a high VQ ratio area as compared to the lower uh, lung zones, which typically carries as compared to the first thing I said, uh, lower oxygen tension. When they mix, they average out and we get what we get. However, in V over Q abnormalities, so if you have, a, have COPD, for example, uh, in COPD, we discussed that there are uh, areas of uh, dead space uh, all over the place if it's advanced COPD. Then you have areas of low VQ ratios, the, the shunt areas in other parts of the lung. So now blood returning from the dead space areas and the shunt areas will have really different kind of oxygen carrying. So you have exaggerated uh, differences between the alveolar oxygen and the blood oxygen. So the, if, if, you, if you go for an AA gradient, it would be exaggerated beyond what happens in normal people. Secondly, just a footnote to have it nicely sealed, this whole concept is that in higher VQ ratio areas, if you remember, there's more ventilation and less flow, right? So in these areas, you have less flow of blood and that's inherent uh, to this abnormality. It's V over Q is equal to sort of infinity. So the flow will always be less than the ventilation. So whatever amount of blood that gets to these areas, yes, it will become super oxygenated with blood but the amount is little, right? And in the shunt areas, as, the, the, as, as per the definition, Q is more and V is less. That's why V over Q is, less, is really uh, less than the normal VQ ratio. So these, these areas are flooded with blood, but there is little ventilation. So the, the oxygen tension in, in this blood will be less. So, in, in summary, basically in V over Q abnormalities, there is a AA gradient with, which is exaggerated and you can pinpoint uh, in your patient of uh, hypoxia or hypoxemia, if there is an exaggerated AA gradient, you will always look for V over Q mismatch abnormalities. Okay. Now let's delve into hypoxemia. Let me just clarify, hypoxemia is less amount of oxygen in blood. Hypoxia is a, is a, is a, bigger, is a bigger framework. Hypoxia is less oxygen supply to the tissues. So the perceptive students would immediately uh, infer that all causes of hypoxemia are part of the causes of hypoxia but not all causes of hypoxia are causes for hypoxemia. I personally hate such sentences, which are, it's like a trick, <laughs> but this is true. So let me just say it quickly. Hypoxemia, all causes of hypoxemia are actually causes for hypoxia, but hypoxia has some additional causes which are not hypoxemic, but still they cause hypoxia, i.e. less oxygen supply to the tissues. This slide deals with hypoxia, hypoxemia. Okay, so if you see, just look at the layout for a bit. This is the cause column. We just dis discuss uh, three, four, five causes of hypoxemia. What happens to the, uh, the blood uh, O2 tension? What happens to the AA gradient? As you can see, this is, uh, this is important. Uh, and then very importantly, uh, what is the role of oxygen uh, in, 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 in this uh, individually in these issues? So right from the top, uh, you see that high altitude is given. At high altitude, you have less oxygen tension. B is for barometric. So the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure of all gases is less, including oxygen, because you are at a height. So you have less uh, barometric pressure and hence less oxygen in air, which means this PiO2 is I is inspired oxygen. 
inspired oxygen availability is also less because there is a general less oxygen in the atmosphere so the this causes since oxygen is uh, not available to its normal sea level uh, extent uh, this causes uh, less uh, blood po2 uh, the aa gradient would be normal why why would it be normal because you have less alveolar o2 leading to less arterial or blood o2 because blood o2 is supposed to take oxygen from the alveolus and in this case the alveolar air is is deficient in oxygen because of the atmosphere so both things decrease hence the gradient remains normal i hope this point is this is a crucial point to understand so supplemental oxygen you give this person oxygen it is it beneficial absolutely you improve this by giving the person inspired oxygen okay so that's one tick hypoventilation so for whatever reason in neuromuscular problem uh, uh, or any other issue uh, uh, physical or chemical uh, imbalance a person starts to hypoventilate so again the alveolar if you hypoventilate so you are ventilating your alveoli less than normal obviously the alveolar o2 will go down when the alveolar o2 the supplier of things of oxygen is down naturally arterial po2 will be down as well okay so in this case again both of these things go down aa gradient is normal supplemental oxygen of course it's beneficial by the way these this this data here can be converted into a nice complicated mcq um diffusion de defects fibrosis you you must have remember you must remember uh, when we talked about respiratory membrane the factors affecting diffusion across the res respiratory membrane one of those factors was the thickness of the membrane right so in fibrosis you what you have is where you had us one one single stack of membrane in between in fibrosis you have increased those stacks of membrane because fibrous tissue has now invaded uh, the uh, the distance between alveolus and the blood vessel again this will lead to uh, more effort on the part of oxygen to travel and uh, i've discussed it extensively that if you increase the distance between the the source of oxygen and where it's required uh, and since it's diff simple diffusion increasing distance will always have a be a problem for oxygen so in this case the blood is uh, uh, oxygenated to a lesser content a lesser uh, uh, amount extent however the aa gradient has increased if you've noticed how come well it's clear the alveolar o2 has no issues you are breathing in at sea level there's nothing between uh, the air passage from the external areas right up to the alveolar there's no problem there so the alveolar oxygen content the p capital a2 will be normal in this case okay so this component is normal however because of fibrous tissue outside the alveolar is deposited there and oxygen has to pass through now additional or more distance this is where the problem is leading to less oxygen in the blood the gap increases that's why you have increased aa gradient in your pulmonary fibrosis patient as well does he get a uh, uh, relative benefit from supplemental oxygen yes he does you can, you should ask why it doesn't treat his fibrosis no sir it doesn't however it increase the delta p the the partial pressure ie you were uh, uh, this is a glass as an example and you are pouring water from it from here and now you are pouring water right from here the pressure is more the water will hit the glass even come out of it right so if you increase the pressure from the alveoli more oxygen uh, there is a chance or in in practicality uh, oxygen does get pushed uh, towards the blood vessels 
and this improves the oxygen content uh, to some extent. V over, uh, v over Q defect, we've just talked about it. Uh, the uh, alveolar air is uh, relatively okay uh, in, in uh, dead space. It actually has more oxygen. In shunt scenarios, uh, it is there. It's just that the flow is so much that there is a mismatch. So P uh, arterial O2 is obviously decreased. However, the AA gradient because of the said uh, scenario increases and there is uh, room for uh, oxygenated, uh, oxygenating supplemental oxygenation of blood uh, of, of, of the person. Uh, and why is that? Which bit will, it, will the extra oxygen help the uh, dead space area or the shunt area? It will improve the shunt area. Okay, because Q is more, V is less. You are improving the V in the shunt areas, so supplemental oxygen is, is of benefit. What about right to left shunts? So if somebody has a hole in his heart or her heart, uh, what will happen is the blood uh, from the right ventricle, instead of completely uh, going from ventricle into the pulmonary artery, it will bypass and some of it will, from, from that hole, enter into left uh, ventricle directly. So it, it, it totally bypasses the lung, right? So uh, because of the presence of this shunted blood from right directly to left, you have uh, that increased uh, uh, drop in uh, PO2 of arterial blood, uh, what you noticed when the two normal uh, uh, deoxygenated bloods from lungs and from the heart tissue itself used to decrease from one, uh, the, the PO2 of arterial blood from 104 to 95. Now you have a shunt adding to that whole normal phenomena, but this shunt is abnormal. So this is additional dumping of deoxygenated blood into the oxygenated blood, which will then increase the, uh, decrease the PO, uh, uh, arterial PO2. And since nothing is wrong with the lung itself, I beg your pardon, nothing is wrong with the, uh, with the lung itself, the alveoli are fine, uh, oxygenation and the whole thing is fine, the AA gradient really uh, increases. Um, however, a footnote here, it depends on the, uh, the size of the shunt. If the shunt is uh, small, then there is limited uh, uh, help that supplemental oxygen can give by again that, that pushing extra oxygen into the blood that is coming uh, its way. Uh, however, if the shunt is significantly large, then oxygen will have uh, very little to no role that it plays uh, for this patient. Okay, so this is hypoxemia. Uh, all these causes remember, will lead to a decreased arterial PO2, okay? AA gradient is basically to help diagnose your patient and O2, supplemental O2 is the treatment. It's a nice comprehensive data for, for you to remember. Okay, now coming to hypoxia. What is hypoxia? So basically decrease oxygen delivery to the tissues. Uh, decrease oxygen, uh, I would say availability, availability to the tissues. Let me just uh, correct this here. Oops, how do we go for text? Yeah, no, we don't want that. Uh, sometimes these things are a problem. Anyway, okay, so this has uh, taken our mind of its own. I will leave it for later, for editing later. So basically, this should say uh, availability, decrease oxygen availability to the tissues. Now, what are the causes? The causes are all the causes of hypoxemia with some additional causes, okay? So with that in mind, check this out. 
just in Deutsch. Now, see this. So basically, if there is any inadequate oxygenation of the blood in lungs, uh, again, uh, all those causes which cause decrease in oxygen in the in the atmosphere. Okay, this is by the way called if it's due to uh, atmospheric causes, it's called hypoxic hypoxia. You can read it in Guyton. Uh, again, hypoventilation. We talked about it. Again, these two causes are from hypoxemia. Any any decrease in the in the physical aspect of respiration will lead, which lead to decrease in alveolar PO2 will obviously cause hypoxia. So this is hypox hypoxemia again. What about this? This is also uh, if the lung itself is damaged due to abnormal VQ, the respiratory membrane, we talked about fibrosis or decreased compliance for whatever reason. Uh, all of this again uh, would lead to hypoxemia, decreased oxygen tension of blood itself, which then will lead to hypoxia as I mentioned. Uh, now we talked about, we already talked about the shunts, the right to left shunts, okay. This also causes hypoxemia, which then causes hypoxia. Um, now this, uh, the transport, so you, you, you see the pattern, you don't need to rote memorize. You just uh, look at the headings, what, it starts from nothing is wrong with, this, with the human being, okay. Uh, in this particular one, hypoxic hypoxia. It's just that the atmosphere is deficient in oxygen. Okay, hypoventilation. The physical aspect is is is, is an issue. Uh, somehow the person is uh, uh, hypoventilating due to some other issue other than uh, the lung itself. Then issues with the lung tissue itself causes. Okay, this will help you remember. Then lung is fine. The problem is outside in the circulation there is shunting of blood from the venous side directly into the arterial side so this is a this is a circulatory cause okay now the problem with the blood so everything else is fine circulation is fine lung is fine atmospheric o2 is fine but the blood is there's a problem with blood and blood supply so the person has anemia or an abnormal hemoglobin which uh, doesn't carry oxygen okay or, or this person is suffering from shock. So there is no enough, not enough blood flow to the tissue. Obviously blood is required for oxygen supply. Okay. And so on and so forth. Or there's tissue edema. So there is, there is fluid accumulation between the tissue cells and the, the, the blood vessel itself, increasing the distance. Again, the same issue like fibrosis, but this time it's the tissue and you have increased the, 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 dura uh, the, the distance that oxygen needs to now travel from the blood into the tissues. So all those, all those things, okay. However, coming to this last part, okay. This last part is inadequate tissue capability of using oxygen. So uh, till now, uh, we have mostly talked about hypoxemic causes of hypoxia, except this lung tissue or a localized circulatory deficiency or a shock like scenario. Okay. Uh, till here, the stuff above is all hypoxemic. Okay. From this downwards, you have hypoxia, which it, it happens without hypoxemia. So something happens with circulation itself, some localized deficiency, or there's edema in the tissue. Is no fault of the oxygen content of oxygen, uh, oxygen content of blood. Similarly, a vitamin B12 deficiency uh, causes uh, the metabolism to go up so much that just about no amount of oxygen is, is enough for these tissues now. So lung is fine, heart is fine, circulation is fine, blood itself is fine. It's just that the requirement has gone up so much that it just cannot cater for this, uh, for this whole uh, issue. So in this, this uh, you won't have hypoxemia. In fact, uh, you will have more oxygen in blood, certainly not less. 
Uh, also in cyanide poisoning, what happens in, you have uh, studied this in uh, cellular physiology, that mitochondria, they, that is where the oxidative phosphorylation takes place. Okay, oxygen is actually consumed. So cellular respiration happens inside the mitochondria. Oxygen is used to create ATP, that F1 particle and all that coupling of the proton, all that stuff in biochemistry, you should remember. What cyanide does is it uncouples the oxidative phosphorylation, is it messes it up. So now you can put in a micro cylinder of oxygen inside a cell. It won't help this cell. It will still be hypoxic. It's like you are inside a water source, still you are dehydrated. This is me being poetic. Anyhow, so cyanide poisoning, again, you will have a normal PO2 in, the, in your blood. Still, the, the physical condition, the symptoms of hypoxia will be there in the patient. Okay, I think we have, we have discussed what we need to discuss about the causes and types of hypoxia. Hypoxic hypoxia is uh, when there's atmospheric issue. Uh, okay, and then there are these various type of hypoxias. Uh, cytotoxic hypoxia is when you have poisoning of cyanide poisoning as an example where there is uh, inability of the tissue to use oxygen okay right anemic hypoxia is when it's due to anemia and so on and so forth what are the signs cyanosis obviously because there is less oxygen and deoxidant oxygen a deoxidant hemoglobin appears bluish uh, under the skin so the patient appears with cyanosis uh, he or she will have increased rate of respiration and increased depth of respiration because uh, the person is struggling to keep the oxygen up for the tissues. And for whatever reason of hypoxia that this person is suffering from, uh, he or she is failing to supply enough oxygen to the tissues. So uh, the hypoxic drive for, from peripheral re chemoreceptors, remember, will kick in and keep on uh, stimulating the nervous center of circulation to bump up your rate and depth of respiration because it's a struggle. Uh, the brain is constantly receiving a signal from peripheral chemoreceptors that there's hypoxia. That's why you have this. Tachycardia is again, the heart also joins this, this whole struggle of respiratory system.